When Assassin's Creed Origins came out in 2017, I have to admit, I wasn't the biggest fan of it. I was torn. I've been a diehard Creed fan ever since the beginning, and with all the changes it made, I found myself questioning if it was actually a Creed game to begin with at all, and I don't think I ever finished it. I had intentions though to come back to the game at some point, so last month I decided to strap on my hidden blade and jump back into Bayek's Egyptian quest from scratch, interested to see how my opinions would change, if at all, after all this time has passed. This is Assassin's Creed Origins, four years later. Sleep. I never sleep. I just wait in the shadows and I will kill you all. Everyone who slipped here at that day is Sewa! Player stepped to the shoes of Bayek, a man on a bloodthirsty revenge quest throughout the enchanting recreation of Egypt. Bayek's journey through this land took me a colossal 90 hours to beat, do every side mission and completes 100% of the map. Personally, the charm of most AC games are their settings, and Ubisoft is one of the best at making worlds that are bursting with beauty and historical representation, but that are also very conducive to the type of gameplay it wants to offer. After all, one of Assassin's core pillars is parkour. To make the system interesting for such a long stretch of time, parkour has to be both seamless yet interactive, which is a tricky combination to nail, as well as having some room to grow with subtle mechanics that the player can learn and adapt to over the course of the game. So we need tall, intricate buildings and scale to facilitate mechanics beyond the basic hold forward to climb, which was novel back in the day with the likes of Assassin's Creed 1, Uncharted 1 and 2, etc. But time evolves and more interaction is necessary. You can say whatever you want about the quality of AC games, some are good and some are bad, but parkour has seen a huge leap forward, just like the platforming mechanics in Uncharted have. Unity, for example, had a very cool parkour system with subtle things you could do like side ejects, kickoffs, and bounce backs. Origins has a few of these, but they're harder to pull off and somewhat situational as cities have less dense structure placements. Unity also had a very stylish animation system to boot. This was taken a step further with Syndicate, with rope swings and grapple hooks, all of which nicely linked when combining different elements. The tall churches and entangled, dense cities made it come to life and supported those mechanics. Exploration became seamless and quite organic, which made moving from place to place enjoyable, flashy, and fast. And that was a big part of the game. Origins approaches parkour much differently. The parkour system has a deliberate feeling to it, one that is far less vogue and stylish. One could even say that the animations feel a bit awkward and clunky when used in succession, having far less flow to them. It's also much slower in practice, which makes for a slightly more stilted gameplay experience, although that actually has some benefits to it, and one of those is having consistency in player inputs. In the previous games, there was a huge trade-off to the stylish parkour, in the sense that sometimes your character didn't climb the way you wanted him to, or do the thing you wanted him to do. This was particularly problematic when climbing off-angle objects, down-climbing, or attempting to navigate busy terrain, or chaining multiple movements back-to-back. -back. In a game where fluidity is king, it was sometimes frustrating that the game seemed to have more control over you than you felt like it should have. In preparation for this video, I went back to a few different Creed games, and this was one of the things that jumped out to me with the likes of something like Black Flag. Edward was constantly climbing in the wrong direction, jumping off ledges when I wanted him to climb up, and randomly latching onto nearby objects when all I wanted him to do was just run forwards. I really like Black Flag and Edward as a character, but jeez, this shit was annoying. The main reason for this was because the parkour was programmed more around the animations than the coding. And of course another one was that sprinting was typically mapped to the same button as climbing and free running. So overall while the parkour was much nicer looking and honestly for me more fun, it was also frustrating because you didn't have consistency. When it comes to Origins, you do though get that reliability and consistency, but the trade-off is two-toned. It feels a little bit rigid and is much less based on mechanics. It also presents much more of a flat world. Structures are shorter, less complex, and far less interlaced. The Egypt they made looks stupendous, and it's almost unthinkable that so much variety was poured into the environments of the game. The biomes are all very unique, which I'm sure was a challenge given that they had to work with sand dunes, deserts, and brown rivers for the most part. However, since this is an open world and much of the gameplay resides outside city walls and smaller encampments, the parkour isn't utilized as much. Urban locations are concentrated in only certain areas, so there isn't much room to use parkour as a means of traversal when outside city walls. 
At most, you'll be scaling cliffs or statues for vantage points, or climbing up the sides of a guard tower or fortress. And pyramids offer tremendous scale, but there isn't any complex parkour required to get up them. It does make it nice for the open world though, as it's very utilitarian, in the sense that it helps accelerate movements by getting the player around fast. However, as a tool of mechanics, the parkour gameplay is just not at a depth necessary to allow for interesting parkour challenges using just Bayek's movement alone, as it's not very versatile. And this is why there aren't any dungeon or tomb parkour challenges as there were in other games. Good parkour is about how many different ways a player can interact with obstacles not just about breezing through those obstacles without stopping to consider their geometry. It also is about chaining movement flows together for aesthetic purposes. Even casual players don't remain stagnant in their abilities. They'll get better as a consequence of playing the game over time, even if it's something simple like picking up on new techniques in parkour or combat. Origins has a movement system that was built simply for ease of use, and the world does suit it, but I definitely would have liked to see more advanced elements layered on top of it. It's not surprising tombs drop parkour challenges in Origins almost entirely, even though older Creed games did have them. These are something I actually missed now replaced by linear, puzzle-solving challenges instead. And this doesn't surprise me, as the parkour system in Origins isn't really conducive to implementing complex platforming challenges based on Bayek's, dare I say, lack of movement abilities and subtleties. So overall, the parkour in Origins is perfectly fine for the game they designed, but it's far from what I would want from an Assassin's Creed game. I would have preferred a middle ground between style and practicality. What we did receive is functional, reliable, and appropriate for Egypt's open world, albeit slow and honestly not as fun as a pure video game mechanic. Another big change in Origins is the game's structure, which features an enormous open world, traditional character leveling, and a main story that contains level requirements for each quest. A big challenge that results from gated stories living inside open worlds like this is that we're never really sure how much side content the player is actually participating in. There's going to be people who just want to see Bayek's quest to the end, others who want to visit every single map icon, and a thousand more who will do some amount in between. By gating the main story, we're essentially asking everybody to engage in the open world regardless if they want to or not. To me, this is perfectly acceptable if the content on the side is compelling and up to par with the main story. In Origins, sometimes it is, and many times it's not. You have the typical filler content here like errands, saving people's kids, and clearing out camps of bandits. This stuff is very abundant, and I don't think that'll be a surprise to anyone who's ever played an open world game. There are gems to find, and I enjoyed a few of the quest chains. You do meet a lot of new characters throughout these missions, but unfortunately they're mostly people that have nothing to do with Bayek's true quest. Most also find no broader place in future events of the story. Some moments stay with you, though, as they highlight Bayek's deep character tones. One I found featuring a girl named Shadia, which provided a really nice set of sequences leading to its melancholy finale. This was a quest that added a lot to Bayek's character, as you can see the broader strokes of his personality come out, such as his empathetic nature towards victimization. But the people whom you interact with see such a small amount of screen time because there's so many quests scattered about. Unlike games like The Witcher 3 that truly give space to their characters to grow and create dramatic mini stories that go on for hours. In Origins, the characters on the side, we only really see in passing. Before you know it, we're whisked off once again to the open world and we typically never see them again. Origins has a pretty good story driven by a fantastic performance by Bayek, who remains one of Assassin's best characters to date but I didn't find the majority of the side quests very engaging at all. As such, I wanted to skip over most of them, but given the level curve of the main story, I knew this was not going to be possible. It's somewhat of a sad limitation for those who just wanted to have what they always had with Assassin's Creed, the choice to play how they wanted. It'd be fine if there was compelling reasons to engage with this content, but I'd say that's pretty rare. Typically, you're just kind of hopping from quest giver to quest marker. There's no ramping up or furthering its themes along the way. The reasons the game gives you to do these are more arbitrarily involved, and that's mostly getting experience, getting weapons, and for crafting purposes, and of course, to stay on par with the dramatic level curve for your next mission. Not necessarily because these activities are going to deepen the story or anything like that. And that's the main problem of the giant open world. Every AC game has a linear story that could be told with or without an open world, which is important to keep in mind. Side activities in the past, though, mostly enriched the experience. That was their purpose, especially since there was never a dedicated leveling system as there is in Assassin's Creed Origins. There was plenty to go around, but never mandatory or overabundant. You simply chose how much you wanted to complete based on your interest. This led to a sort of create your own repetitiveness in which you could explore every nook and cranny of the game if you wanted to, or focus on the main conflict, or any amount in between. You were in control of how much or how little you wanted to deviate from that story. Story. 
how many tombs you wanted to search, how many feathers you wanted to collect, how much Templar hunting you wanted to do in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. When you had your fill, you could just head back to the main story and continue right then and there. That's arguably the best part of any open world, the feeling of freedom you have. Because the player can do the content in any order they want, it makes it very difficult as well to create relevant and pressing material or tie it back to the main story as the player could have done either A, all of it, B, some of it, or C, some of it, but in a completely different order in relation to where they happen to be in the main story. We can't spoil anything or create loopholes in character or story threads, and we certainly cannot make any plot affecting content here that people might miss. Thus, we clear encampments, pick up shiny things, help the locals, and hunt crocodiles instead. So we have a system where fairly mundane side content carries very little narrative weight, yet is also awkwardly essential to progressing through the game, which both limits design and bloats player game time. The beauty of the original trilogy was the tightly woven narrative and the importance of side quests rather than the quantity, which were far less abundant though much better integrated. Many felt like important moments of the game. Assassins 1, 2, and 3 also did a really good job disguising them by making them part of the central story arc and the character threads as well. Origins requires you to level up as main story quests are at times gated and out of reach if you don't venture off the beaten path, especially on harder difficulties as high level enemies obliterate by it can take very, very little damage. In many other action games, you can take on a quest at a lower than recommended level and still have a pretty decent chance at completing it. You simply accept a greater challenge in return. It might take you a little bit longer, but you had a shot at doing it. Origins is pretty much the opposite, housing a system that is solely determined by how much experience the player has acquired. Their progression has nothing to do with their own mechanics or their own skill. Consequently, encounters aren't actually challenges, they're stat checks. Essentially, the number above an enemy's head dictates what you can and can't do and where you can and cannot go, not your own abilities as a player of the game. So if you're sticking mainly to the story, you'll find yourself in a cycle of wandering around looking for side quests to be able to advance to the next main mission. It almost feels like you're playing an MMO half the time. Especially when the map is divided into rigid level zones and features a large amount of busy work, fetch quests, and rather humdrum grinding. Furthermore, the world doesn't acknowledge your efforts as you go through this repetitive cycle. Games like Syndicate had figured this out years before, like when you took a district, friendly NPCs would spawn in and highlight your map. Sure, it's not much, but it gave you the sense that you were affecting the world in some small way. In Origins, you kill, loot, get some experience, hoping to get a gold weapon, yet with none of the progress or satisfaction that would leave you attached to it. Worse yet, it inhibits the story greatly, especially in Act 2, which comprises of a great deal of the narrative content of the game, wherein you assassinate four different targets. These, in theory, should be spaced out about every hour or so, just like they were with Altair and Ezio. And they are if you were just doing the story naturally, but you can't. You have to stop everything you're doing and play catch up to whatever level the game arbitrarily wants you to be. And as such, each one ends up being separated by like three to five hours of actual gameplay. Additional content has never been perfect in Assassin's Creed. It's always been a mixed bag, but it's always been more interesting than what we have here. For example, in Assassin's Creed Syndicate, kidnap missions work differently than factory missions, and gang hideouts work differently than assassinations. And again, finishing each one had you expand your territory so you could see the effects of your actions. You got a ship in Black Flag for exploration, Assassin's Creed 3 had the underground, Unity had the Paris stories and murder mysteries and co-op missions, and Brotherhood had agents, contracts, towers, faction missions, all introduced while you played through the main campaign, never pushed on you. It was more like, hey, if you like this stuff, there's more where that came from. Origins takes the easy way out, dumping a bunch of icons on the world map while carving out a strict level curve for its main story, removing all responsibility for developing proper pacing. This was taken even further with Assassin's Creed Odyssey, where the entire game turned into one giant, never-ending marathon of systematic bucket-style content. I for one find it far more effective to either trim the fat completely out, or better yet, base open world progression on variety. That way you can still have the traditional level system intact, but have it supplement gameplay that becomes more complex as the game goes on. Levels themselves should not be the entire difficulty curve, as there's no skill attached to it. You either have the stats to kill the enemy, or you don't. There's nothing in the middle. Origins has some okay gameplay. Clearly it was inspired by many other games of the same style, but I think it could have taken some lessons from the Arkham or Spider-Man games all the same. These titles gradually introduce more enemy types, gadgets, combat moves, and abilities, and they have a leveling system too. All the while providing basically the same type of open-ended game structure. In Origins though, the gameplay never really changes. 
even far into the game, it doesn't really grow. In fact, the entire system is about acquiring gear to make the gap between the player stats and the enemy stats simply wider. The result is power fantasy, in which you start off as a pile of shit at the beginning and end up a one-shotting god by the end. Which is totally fine to give players a feeling of power, but when the basics of the combat never really change, what's the point? Many games have simple combat systems, it's not a bad thing, and I hope to present this video without ever saying the words Dark Souls, but it's really a perfect illustration to cement this point. Dark Souls has a very simple combat system. The thing is, the rest of the game amplifies it. Simplicity requires other elements to make up for it, like tight mechanics, a health system that forces you to think, harsh difficulty, terrain obstacles, or player builds beyond the basic spam light attack combo or charge up. Origins essentially has none of those things. Weapon types offer varying animations, but nothing more. Bayek only has three tools to use. Health regenerates in combat by leveling up this skill. The lack of enemy variety makes fights feel very similar, and the skill system does not change much of any core mechanic. This way! The combat system also lacks a clear identity because it doesn't seem to want to commit to any one core idea. They couldn't decide if they wanted a simple yet refined Dark Souls system or popcorn action gameplay in the style of Batman. What we have instead is sort of a hybrid featuring a lock-on mechanic, which is traditionally seen with many third-person action games, but with far less commitment that is traditionally required by the player. This is mostly felt with Bayek's basic strings, which can all be cancelled during any frame into a dodge, even combos and heavy attacks. This allows Bayek to essentially just dance around and remain relatively safe with the use of these cancels, because they're instant and they have no recovery period. Here I'm demonstrating some of the various cancel options, and you can see they have very, very liberal windows. This mechanic is essentially a safety net. It gives you some leeway in case you make a mistake. And it's also present in many 2D fighter games that rely on readability and or to set up combos like FADCs and Street Fighter 4. It's also a great mechanic for games that have very complex game mechanics. However, Origins really doesn't. At the very best in Origins, you'll simply be able to chain this cancel into a thrust or a heavy attack. So what results from this generosity, and with a lack of a stamina system, is this gameplay that feels quite slippy and slidey. And oddly enough, because you cannot parry cancel, it makes the defensive gameplay feel very static at the same time. This makes the total gameplay feel floaty and stiff at both extremes, which I don't think is a great combination. So, you neither have the strategicness of a slower system or the complexity or range of options of a faster system with a wider combat field leaving Origins squished somewhere awkwardly in the middle. I've always had my issues with AC combat. It's never been exceptional, and it relied way too heavily on counter mechanics for far too long, but at least it looked pretty damn cool, and it was more about the theatrics. It was also more thematically appropriate before the franchise went full RPG. Sure, enemies in early games were complete imbeciles who would stand around and watch their friends die, but the combat was still fun, as much of the setup revolved more around the stealth mechanics than the new games do. And there was some evolution to it. Unity was refined, although Assassin's Creed 3 was probably the best version of it. It wasn't entirely just counter to win, you had different tactics against different enemies and it flowed nicely. But Origins is where they stopped and started mimicking what was flourishing at the time. Standard third-person combat with a lock-on mechanic. Was this a decision to take AC to the next level, or to take AC to a broader audience? Stealth is also surprisingly downplayed in Origins, as it's now completely optional rather than a preferable gameplay style. The Hidden Blade, the iconic weapon of AC, is no longer a one-hit kill weapon anymore, and this has huge consequences. This makes it very hard to sneak around restricted areas undetected when captains and high-level enemies don't die from a single attack. When this is the case, the player loses stealth and is forced into melee combat, even after striking them with the blade first. This is a trend that would continue in AC, again to limit the player's progression through the game. And the worst part is, if you up the difficulty in Assassin's Creed Origins, the health of the enemies rises even more, which makes this even more problematic, even if you spec into the stealth tree. Assassin's Creed Origins was a difficult mountain to climb four years later. The setting was sublime, Bayek was incredible, but I struggled to find the pure joy that other Creed games gave me for so much less of my time. The open world nature of the title made progress slow and difficult, and I often found myself spending most of my time doing things that I didn't want to do. When the game would actually focus on the main story, I was there, I was involved, I wanted to see it through to the end. There was just so many roadblocks in my way to get to that point. 
As gamers, we often critique a game based off what we want from it, not necessarily what it tries to provide. I try my best to isolate the components of Origins, but in reality the series is so long-standing that it's really hard not to compare it to the other games of the franchise. Everything that it removes, social stealth, the subtle parkour mechanics, the classic style target assassinations, and the split modern stories, those are the things that I really fell in love with initially. I don't mind the open world of Origins, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't hurt the overall experience. If there wasn't so much mandatory grinding, it'd be less of a chore and I know I'd enjoy it much, much more. It showcases very little that drew me to this great series to begin with. It's full of repeat activities, the combat system is fairly average, the RPG mechanics and level system make progress pretty painful at points, and the story, it does forego a great reason many people actually love Assassin's Creed. But it is still a fairly well-made title, it looks nice and it is certainly playable. Ambition often leads to dreaming big, and Origins does. It tries to be a lot of different games at once, yet it does fail to dedicate to any one particular idea. If I had to guess, it saw the lofty big brand open world games that had seceded it, and let that influence their decision to rebrand the franchise. AC would go on to carry this torch into the next game with Odyssey, which was a series low point if you ask me. Valhalla is where they tightened things up and really improved on the presentation, the combat, and the characters, but it was bloated and overbearing all of the same. It's hard to justify going backwards in time to recreate the original AC for today's game culture. I don't think Ubisoft needs to, even though I'd be all for it. I think they just made too big of a jump when they put out Origins, so much so that they kind of forgot about what truly made the franchise great in the first place. I'm confident the team that made this game did pour their hearts into it, but I preferred the larger focus on stealth of previous games. Once that became a low priority, the story, the gameplay mechanics, and the presentation, the characters as well, they have to compensate. Origins doesn't have the best overall story, and it doesn't have great pacing, it doesn't have any memorable enemies either, which is a damn shame. But I did grow to like Bayek as a character, and several of the smaller story beats were touching and impactful, especially those featuring the emotions he harbored over his wife and son. Bayek's friendliness towards kids in general, as well as a nice character touch. Some franchises thrive in perpetual limbo, others though it's natural to pivot for creative reasons eventually. You can't hold on to the same formula forever, you'll only burn out your development teams and probably your audience too, though I'm sure the same could be said for the opposite. It's admirable to design Origins the way it was, but that doesn't mean we can't hold it to the same standard as other great games in the franchise. Four years later, going back to Origins was bittersweet. On one hand, it reminded me of the great core story of Bayek. His pain that you can feel and his quest for vengeance is something I enjoyed watching play out greatly. Even though Aya's gameplay sections were tacked on and the ending felt a bit rushed, I still felt a draw to the game's central adventure regardless. It's just a shame that the open world remains such an obstacle to absorb that story at a pace that's best for it, especially when it's not possible to circumvent those blockades with my own skill and mastery of the game. Pushing through it reaffirmed me to why I typically get turned off by bigger is better games, and I truly think that Assassin's Creed is best when it doesn't put so much constraints on the player to be able to do what they really want to. In the end, I do consider Assassin's Creed Origins a pretty decent entry to the franchise, but not one I'm clamoring to go back to anytime soon.